Okay, so welcome back. It's been pretty fast. <laughs> I just wanted to separate these two sessions so that it can be recorded separately. So on those you wanted to do the meditation, you can just do the first one. And those who want to listen to this little talk, you can go for the second one. So welcome back. Hi, Lourdes. Um, so I hope that uh, you all are continuously in meditation. So let people sign in. Let just wait for a minute to people to sign in back. And those you already sign in, how are you doing? Hi. Hi, Salvador. <laughs> so people are coming back fast, but it's taking a little time. So I guess some people might be not able to come back. So that's fine. We all, uh, all the teaching sessions are um, recorded here. Tashidele Yonula. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Rajit. Okay, so I think uh, maybe I can begin to start now. So, so this session is a mirror-like wisdom. So uh, among uh, five wisdoms that those you are listening for first time, I was uh, telling, uh, I think it was yesterday, I was talking a little bit about the five wisdom. Uh, there are many different uh, explanations of five wisdom according to the Sutric tradition, according to Tantric tradition, according to the Dzogchen tradition, according to each schools of Buddhism, um, different ways of explaining it, slightly different, but most of, fundamentally mostly is the same. And within the Bion tradition also, there is from Shangjun Yinju, from cosmology, from Zhu, and there is from uh, Zermik, and there is from Maju, and there's different versions of it. So, but I don't want to get into this complexity of textual. Uh, but I wanted to stay more with the um, simple and clear, direct understanding and its direct relation to our life and our practices, particularly to our well-being, to our pain, that pain that we are working on right now. So I just want to read this once again, those who are listening first time from Shang Yun Yinju uh, in Tibetan, but at least, you know, those you understand, you will think about it. And those you don't understand, it's also nice to hear this uh, little. Uh, sometimes it's nice. To, I I enjoy sometimes listening to a language that I don't hear. Just nice. So. Tayan simju mo tsemachiya matupe tongbani ji she tongba tei rangji rikpachiya salve melonta bi she. Rikpatang tongba ni chuda o mandre ba shindu ye yi me chebe nyamba ni ji yi shi. Nyamla mandre sosor chebe sosor tobi yi shi. Tinlen toba me ba rangji lunji tube chawa tube yi shi. Yi shi. Yi shi. So these are like five wisdom. So wisdom of emptiness. In, in, in Shang Yun Yenji it talks about wisdom of emptiness. In other Buddhist schools it's called Chuyin Yishe, Dharmadhatu, and the rest, others are in the same name. And the second is a mirror-like wisdom, a wisdom of equanimity, wisdom of all accomplishing wisdom. So today we are talking about mirror-like wisdom. So, so what is, how is the connection between the wisdom of emptiness and wisdom, uh, mirror-like wisdom? So wisdom of emptiness is, it says, uh, 
our mind, nature of our mind, there is no substance, there is no inherent existence. It's, it's a lack of substance, inherent existence, that, that lack of inherent existence is the emptiness. The realization of that emptiness is the wisdom. Wisdom is always awareness. So basically, let's say this way. Wisdom is always awareness. Uh, when we say wisdom, it's always it's aware awareness of something. So the first case is the wisdom awareness of that absence of self pain, self identity. In a way, in experientially speaking, that's what it means. So wisdom of emptiness will be uh, this through the, uh, through the meditation, able to rest deep in your body, speech and mind until you are able to dissolve uh, that your pain, perception of pain identity, its energetic aspect of it in your body, its energetic aspect of it in your speech, its energetic aspect of it in your mind, when they dissolve, when you're able to rest these three doors fully, you access to inner space, inner awareness, and inner qualities. And so, so that first dis dissolution or awareness of that dissolution or that sacred space is the wisdom of emptiness. But awareness, being fully aware of that space, the awareness itself, when you, when you are like aware of that awareness. So it says, that empty nature, when you're aware of that empty nature, that awareness, when you're aware of that awareness of that empty nature, that is like a mirror-like wisdom. So it's more like a, uh, you are recognizing that light or that awareness. So that is example. Another example also here sometime in a, uh, in a Dzogchen teaching, it says that, I mean, there's many different ways. So let's say this way, it's not just one way to look at it, the metaphor of mirror. Okay, so let's be a little bit more open in traditionally or also also generally speaking uh, the notion of mirror. So let's be a little bit more open, flexible. So my question to all of you is, do you carry a mirror? How many people are carrying a mirror right now? Right? And particularly, you know, how many ladies uh, carrying a mirror or how many people uses a mirror you see <laughs> more you can see quite many people you're carrying a mirror so what what do you use this mirror for how do you use it please explain me how do you use your mirror what do you use your mirror for Okay, you use it in the morning or you use it during the daytime, during the break, but what you use it for? To see your face, right? In a, in a Guru Yoga meditation practice, we say, Rango Rangi Shepara Chinjilok. Rango Rangi Shepara Chinjilok. Please help me to recognize my true face, my true nature, or the true nature of my mind. This is what we pray every single day. Help me to recognize my face, myself. So we use mirror to see our face. But of course, this face, it's not really your face. This is a skin that is quite un unpredictable. And it seems like it's changing quite fast. If you look your, um, you know, photos four or five years back, 10 years back, 
changing a lot. This is changeable phase. But you're still trying to look at it and trying to see you don't like the change in your face. You wish it does not change. You wish it stays young, youth. You wish it looks better. You're trying to do a makeup and you're trying to smile and smile a different way and see which smile you like the best. But those all are a momentum appearances in that mirror. They just last for a mi minute or second in that mirror and that laughter that you feel is good enough or you agree it, but it will not last the moment you move away from the mirror. You might right away, you might trap back into your pain identity or the face of pain identity. You see, the point that I'm trying to make here is usage of mirror. So think about like a mirror in a bigger terms, a universal mirror. Think about, we say, luminous, as the mirror of luminous mind, mirror of pure space, mirror of pure awareness, mirror of pure warmth, mirror of pure quality. You're mirroring these deep enlightened quality outward in the world. We mirror each other. I always tell this story, but I'm sure many of you, you heard this story, so, um, so you can ignore, ignore that. But those you did not hear, I tell about my son, Singe, Singe Wangkel. When Singe was about, I think probably four or five years old, we were gathering in, in, a, in a student's house for dinner, Sangha gathering. And everybody was a little tired end of the end of the day during the retreat, and everybody was a little bit more silent and quiet. And Singe was very talkative, and he was talking a lot with everybody. He's not shy. So much of the confidence, moving around, talking, talking, talking. At some point, he looked at right, left, look at different people's face. He, he said to us, he said, "Am I talking too much?" Am I talking too much? And when I heard from him that, I was very proud. I was a proud father for that moment. Because that age, three, four years old, ability to reflect up on that situation, or maybe reflecting back, the echoing back his own voice, from the mirror of the silence, of collective silence. So everybody was not talking. There was a, like a mirror of collective silence in which he speaks out, sound echoing back to him, and he hear himself. So what, we, what, what did we do that moment? As a group, we helped him to recognize his own speech his own voice, or maybe his own noise in that case, that he felt that maybe he was talking too much and nobody said anything. And he slowly walked away and into another room. So many times in our life, we can do that. Whole, whole universe is mirror for us. Every relationship, we can be mirror to each other. We, we are mirror to each other, but we consciously, consciously we can choose to be mirror for each other. Like for example, you can remain more in that stillness, be mirror for actions of others. Even though somebody did something wrong, not responding immediately with bad action, but remaining in that stillness, that stillness becomes a mirror of stillness in which they will observe or reflect back to their actions, negative actions. 
They recognize through your mirror, but not you through your judgment. There is much more appreciation when somebody recognizes through your mirror of stillness, but not judgment that you are judging their actions. Or if somebody is talking a lot, or even complaining a lot, even yelling at you, but if you remain in the silence, a presence in your inner silence, and not respond negatively, not judge for what somebody's speech, but able to purely, peacefully, able to maintain presence in that silence. The silence becomes the mirror for that person's noise or pain speech. When the person he hears through the reflection back from your mirror of silence from you, appreciates you, person feels that you did not judge, but you accommodated, hosted, and you're being kind, understanding. There's a deep sense of appreciation to you. At the same time, deep learning for himself or herself. That is like a power of mirroring silence toward consciously power, consciously mirroring silence of sil your silence toward somebody's speech. Same way, silence of your open heart, the spaciousness of your open heart, mirror of spaciousness of your open heart. is something that if somebody, if you can, you can see somebody's uh, movement, position, uh, energetically you feel somebody is mentally disturbed, but instead of immediately judging that, judging somebody, but if you hold that mirror of open heart, mirror of open heart, if you hold that mirror of open heart, Maybe somebody is able to uh, self-reflect back one's own judgment, one's own negative imagination, and appreciate you for accommodating and, and able to learn from that. So somehow what I'm trying to say here is mirror-like wisdom also can be understood like that. Being mirroring to somebody. I mean, in a very, very simple way of understanding mirror-like wisdom is basically awareness of seeing the truth in that mirror of Dharmadhatu, in that mirror of emptiness, able to see the ceaseless manifestation of conventional truth, Kunzabdemba, or ceaseless manifestation of appearances and energy in that boundless space, able to see, perceive, witness, experience, like you see images in the mirror. That is kind of, I think, in a very simple way to understand what this mirror-like wisdom means. Is that making any sense? Okay. Yes, good. So sometime, like in an everyday basis, like, a, like I, yesterday I was talking a little bit, you know, this five wisdom from traditional point of view of five wisdom in, in some, like a Sutra tradition, only the enlightened being, the Buddhas, have five wisdoms. The ordinary people don't. And according to the Dzogchen tradition, we all have these, the five wisdom in our, ourself. They are perfected in ourself. So it's just a question and a matter of are we aware of them? Are we awakened in these wisdoms? Are we uh, apply these wisdoms through our everyday activity and experiences? 
our activities of our body, activities of our speech, activities of our mind, our recollection, our memories, our emotions, and our thoughts, our senses, sense perceptions, our interaction with the world, are, are these, um, these wisdoms, are, uh, are we able to experience, uh, wit witness some of these ex wis wisdoms in our everyday life experiences? And one maybe a simple exercise could be that sometime just be like a mirror. Also, I always give example of in a public bathroom at the airport. You know, if you look, public bathroom at the airport, hundreds and thousands of people come through that mirror. And all these people, different age, different uh, level of state of consciousness, emotions, frustrations, sense of lost, tired, they all come from the in front of that and they look at themselves. They walk away with being unhappy. They're trying to fix it. They are okay with their appearances and they leave. But what about the mirror? Does mirror have any issues with any of those people? No. Mirror does not have any issues with any of those people. Mirror is Kundu Zangpo, Samanta Badra. Mirror is all good, accepts everybody as they are and as they are appearing from their true nature. Mirror allows you to be who you are. Mirror does not judge you how you appear to be from that essence. Mirror also does not praise you or compliments you after you, your e pain ego or a smart ego feels like you look quite good. Mirror holds always that mirror-like wisdom quality for every single appearances. So in some time in meditation, you can be like that. Just like a mirror. Be aware, but not judge. Be aware, but not judge. You walk out in the street, you see a person with a strange dress, be aware, but not judge what they are dressing. You go out in a person for different colors, different age, different dresses, different language, different nationality, different religion, different any, anything different from you, and you just simply recognize even though most people follow teaching Dharma, we're probably you're more very open, but still we all have this judgment within ourselves, voice of judgment within ourselves. And just go out, moment you hear the voice of judgment, recognize, don't judge yourself for judging others. Also, recognize when you are judging others, and recognize you are judging others, stop judging after that recognition. And, and also like a voices, like a, I was just thinking, you know, something that we always say something like, when, we, when you want to run into trouble, when, we, when you want to have a pain and suffering, one thing we do, often do, we say something like this. We say something like, how it's possible how is possible she can say that? How is possible he can do that? How is possible they can do that to me? They do that in the world? Or do that to somebody? Say something. Whatever, particularly in, toward you. Whenever you feel that somebody did something, said something, behaved certain way, toward you, where you your instant responded, how it's possible they can do that, say that. Just for a moment, recognize, you just said, how's possible they can say that or do that? And you hear that voice and tell yourself, why not? Of course it's possible. 
because they did already. It's not even a question of possibility. It already happened. They already did. They already judged me. Why not? Why not they can judge me? They're human. Human beings judge people, judge each other. But if they're judging each other, why not, why not they can judge me? They can judge me. It's okay to be judge, judged. Nothing wrong. I, I don't have to become smaller, weaker. I don't have to get lost, frustration, just because somebody judges me. And if I realize that and not become smaller, weaker, because somebody judged me, and that very moment, your awareness has strengthened you. Uh, your awareness gives you a power to be who you are and not, not be affected by others who you are. That's powerful, a sense of experience of yourself. So, so I think uh, we are we run out of time. So I I um, will stop here, and I continuously hope that all of you are meditating and give feedback here. And uh, this is a little bit short time to cover a lot of things. But maybe let me tell this thing one thing here. I think it's important. I will. I I I, I just thought maybe I would just say it out loud. Then then I I have committed. Then I have to do it. Which, which is the um, tentative plan, then if I mention it here, then, then it's not a tentative plan anymore. We have to do it. So the, I think the good news will be at some point when we finish this cycle of teaching on five wisdoms, I tend, hope to invite uh, uh, friends and teachers from other schools, other all the Buddhist schools, uh, lamas, and that who will talk about five wisdom in their each of their own tradition and I don't I know the one of the most challenging will be the translator but at least we will have somebody help we were trying to find somebody who can translate that so we'll see how it works but at least if some of them will be able to speak in English a little bit and some if not then yes they will speak in English at Tibetan and then we will find some way to translate or subtitle later on okay so Thank you very much, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, before next Thursday, um, maybe on Wednesday evening, it's possible we will do another session before Thursday, regular session. If I'm able to find some time, I will do an extra one, but if not, for sure, we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you very much and continue, continue, continue practice and work on your pain five times informal, at least one time formal and, and, and I will look forward to hear the result and uh, that, that reason why I wanted to hear is if it's challenge, it's good to hear. If it's success, it's also good to hear that it inspires other people you know, clear the doubt of other people, the power of these practices, okay? So, goodbye, thank you.